you for joining us uh, here on the way. And uh, this is a church service, Sunday morning service. We have one at 9 and 10.30 a.m. at Ephesian Vision Ministries here at Butler Market in Boyd Acres in Bend, Oregon. Uh, the service is designed specifically for the Internet, uh, for broadcasting on the Internet for people uh, in countries all over the world that uh, don't have either access to teaching of the Word of God uh, or just want to partner with someone that uh, just is, is, is passionately uh, wanting to evangelize the lost and, and, and seek and save those that are lost in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we do have seats here if you want to come in and be a part of the service. Uh, you can do that if you're currently going to a church. Uh, we ask that you continue to support that church with your tithes and offerings. Uh, we have a number of outreach ministries that we're involved in, and it's possible to stay involved in that church, but in partnering with us in some of the ministry outreaches we're doing um, here at Ephesians Vision Ministries. We have recently partnered with, um, name slips me, um, with another ministry that we are starting to doing foreign language audio streaming. The first language provision ministries is the name of the ministry. And they are making financially possible to spread the word of God in Japanese. Uh, we're providing the infrastructure, the IT support, the bandwidth on the internet to do it. They're making the money possible. And so it, it is their ministry. We're just supporting them and providing the physical means for them to do that. Uh, the first audio stream is in Japanese, and we look forward to bringing in more audio streams of other foreign languages because Jesus Christ said, go unto all the world and preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and set the captives free. That is the Great Commission. That's what it says in the Word of God that we're supposed to do as the church. Um, and we want to do that. We want to do that. We have a passion to do that. Welcome to the way. This is the 1030 a.m. service. Uh, you're more than welcome to come here. If you have money above what you're giving your other church, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, we have a basket here you can donate to, or you can donate, donate online at our PayPal link or email your donations to 711 Northeast Butler Market Road, Bend, Oregon. 711 Northeast Butler Market Road, Bend, Oregon. And we appreciate your prayers as well. If there's a way we can partner with your ministry, we're pretty full on our plate with things we're doing, but if there's any way we can promote what you're doing. Uh, my background is in broadcast journalism, is in news, uh, promotions, radio station promotion. And if there's a way we can promote your ministry or tell your story, then we'd love to do that. Uh, one of the missions that God has given us is to find out what God is doing in the world and report it. And we're doing that. Uh, you can go to our website, evm1.info or the jesusnetwork.info and uh, find out uh, ways we're doing that. So, good morning. How are you? I'll be right back. Let me just take a look at something here, and we will uh oh, God is good, God is so very, very good. Oh, there's so much on my mind this morning to share with you. I'm going to to be taking bunny trails all over the place today. Oh Lord, let's pray, Lord, I just pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to teach me as I'm teaching others to be taught myself. God, I just pray for a humble spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to work through me and to say things to people that they need to hear. God, we are not here to convict of sin. We are here to be light shining in darkness. We are to let the Holy Spirit work through us for it is the Holy Spirit who convicts of sin. God, it is your will to love people. It is your will that none be lost, but all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help us to do that this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 You know, um, healing is still active in the body of Christ. One of the ministries that we've just recently partnered with as of yesterday, we finally got the ducks in a row, uh, 
uh, a friend of mine, Mark Kuntz, has developed with the International Association of Healing Rooms, which Ephesian Vision Ministries is a part of. We have a healing room here every Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m. You can uh, Skype in. You can uh, go to the International Association of Healing Room website. And it, we can pray for you anywhere in the world. Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m., uh, starting this Monday night, we're going to be going online. So go to the I, the um, inter, do a Google search for IAHR, or International Association of Healing Rooms in Spokane, Washington, and uh, go to their online healing room tab. And Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m., we are going to be one of the healing rooms that... that um, man the booth so to speak that uh, are there to pray with and we can uh, you can either just instant message chat with us or we can see your likeness and pray for you for healing you can call in on the phone 541-323-2882 541-323-2882 or you can um, email us chat us just come by in person we're at the corner of Butler Market and Boyd Acres. We've had uh, some amazing healings with God uh, in healing rooms. One night, uh, about three weeks ago, we had a man's leg grow about two inches. And it was an accident that, that the accident happened a couple decades ago. And we had members of the healing room team laying hands on this, this man. And it was amazing to see because everybody jumped all at once. It wasn't one of those miracles where, did you see the leg move? I don't know. I, did you think? I think I saw it move, but I don't know. It was like, whoa! Everybody jumped all at once. And the man in the chair said it felt like somebody had taken his leg and pulled it out. It was, it was one of those suddenlies of God. And it was amazing. God, I just thank you for that man's healing. And uh, he was having... Um, uh, hip pain, back pain, lower back pain. And we were praying for the lower back pain. And it, during the prayer, it, it came out that, that one of the man's legs was shorter than the other one. So we prayed for that to grow, and it grew. Praise God. And we've been talking to the man, and he's just praising God. And we had another healing that we'd prayed for where a man had injured his shoulder, couldn't raise his shoulder uh, above this level. And we prayed for him. He called in on the phone. He and his wife called in on the phone. He was in severe pain, could not sleep, hadn't slept in days. And he was just really, really exhausted. So we prayed for him. And it wasn't that night, but it was the next night. He went to sleep that night, woke up the next day, and his pain was still there. The following night, he went to sleep and woke up that following morning, and it was completely gone. And he called us on the phone uh, that Sunday after that happened and said, praise God. He said, I can even wash my hair. I can do everything. He said, there is no pain. The last time I injured my arm this way, there, were, there was pain for months. And God healed me in two days. Praise God. So healing is still happening in the body of Christ. The fivefold ministry is active. Prophets, teachers, evangelists, uh, the Holy Spirit is still doing a work on the earth today. It is our hunger to see people healed and set free. It, when, you, when you read of the healing miracles in the Bible, nowhere does it say that Jesus sent people away who wanted healing. Everyone who came to Jesus was healed. Time and time again, it would say things like, all were healed. He went through the country and healed all their diseases and afflictions. If they came to Jesus and confessed him as the Son of God, he healed their afflictions. It says all were healed. So then you might ask the question, how come everybody isn't healed today? I don't know. But what I do know is that I have seen so much of the healing miracles of God that I'm hungry to see more. I am hungry for the day that it's an exception when people are not healed, not that they are. 
one of the situations in the United States why we may not be seeing more miracles of healing is because of the spirit of unbelief. We here in America totally rely on doctors and they're good. I have nothing but good things to say about doctors. I think they're of God. I think the knowledge is of God. I think they have a compassion to serve and heal. But I believe God does the healing and he uses doctors to complete that healing. I am not saying don't seek medical attention. Please understand that. There are people that believe in healing that, and I've run into this on countless occasions, where they say, if you go to the doctor, you're demonstrating unbelief. I don't agree with that. I think that God gave us doctors and medicine for a reason to use them. When I get sick, the first thing I do is pray and seek God for healing. And I ask for God's direction. Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. If you look at the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, oftentimes it says, and Jesus went alone to pray. Jesus spent a lot of time alone praying. He was the Son of God, and he still needed to be in communication with the Father. We need to do the same thing. So when I get sick, I pray to God, God, what do you want me to do? And sometimes I'm led personally to just push in for healing. Sometimes I feel it's appropriate to go to the doctor and, and have the healing occur that way. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I am not saying don't go to the doctor. What I am saying is the first thing I do is pray. If the healing does not happen, I go to the doctor. The third thing is sometimes I will use the doctor to testify of the healing miracle of God. We could talk about healing and we will in future sermons, but that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I did want to mention the fact that we do have online healing rooms that uh, if you want to get involved in that ministry and be an online prayer warrior, you can do it at home. Uh, you can sign up for a time to monitor the online healing rooms and be a prayer warrior for healing on behalf of everyone in the nation. And you can be online and waiting and people from Czechoslovakia or Russia or South Africa or Indonesia can log in and ask for a prayer for healing and you can heal them, you can pray for them. There's been uh, documented cases of healing by chat, healing by email, healing online. And if you want more information on that you can call us here. It's not our ministry but we are definitely involved in it and promote it and and Thank you, uh, Mark Kuntz and all the people at the International Association of Healing Rooms in Spokane, Washington, of which we are a member, um, for uh, returning us to the, to the ministry of John G. Lake. Now, John G. Lake, uh, in fact, uh, my ordination is through the International Fellowship of Ministries, and that is a, a, a ministry that was an offshoot of the John G. Lake Healing Ministries of the 40s, 1940s or so. When John G. Lake was conducting his healing ministry, Spokane was documented as the healthiest city in the nation of the United States. There were thousands of documented healings under the John G. Lake ministry. We're not worshiping John G. Lake, but what I love in listening to the stories of the healing miracles from that ministry, it was a man who who believed in the power of God to heal and said, don't look at me, look at God, but God heals. And I believe in this day and age we need to dig those wells of revival and of healing and, and uh, it's kind of like walking up a ladder. You build on the ministry of your forefathers and you build and you take it to the next level. And what we're supposed to do in this age is we are supposed to mentor and bring people up that can take it from the level we take it to and take it higher. What we should do as we disciple 
and mentor and tutor young believers as we bring up Timothys in the body of Christ today. We're to mentor them to do greater works than we do. We're to equip them and disciple them as to how to work in the gifts of healing, how to work in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, how to preach a gospel that is full of power and authority. The gospel is not a pain pill, is not a panacea, is not uh, something that will make you just give you enough to survive. Jesus said, I've come to bring you life and life more abundantly in this day and age. Today, today, the kingdom of God is here. When the disciples asked Jesus Christ, when is the kingdom of God going to appear to be here? And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is here within you. The kingdom of God is here. Now, within you. One of the things that we're going to be speaking about in, um, there's a book called God's Generals uh, by Roberts, Roberts Learden. And it has stories of uh, the revivalists, uh, stories of Peter Cartwright, who was a uh, circuit writing preacher. Uh, stories of Francis Asbury, Jonathan Edwards, George Whitefield, John Wesley, uh, Charles Finney. And we're going to be taking a look at some of these, uh, Dwight Moody and William and Catherine Booth, uh, Billy Graham, people that were leaders in the body of Christ, that were revivalists. As you look at the common denominators of those individuals, there was a passion to reach the lost, a passion to reach the lost. There was a circuit writing preacher, but preacher by the name of Jason Lee who came to the state of Oregon to teach the Native Americans about the gospel of Jesus Christ. There were amazing things that happened in that ministry. We'll be sharing stories about Jason Lee as well. In fact, we're going to be going to the camp meetings at Salilo Falls near the Dalles mid-July, and we're going to be broadcasting those live on the Internet, and we invite you to uh, tune in for that and, and listen for that as well. The kingdom of God is here now within you. The kingdom of God is here. We believe that the church should be an embassy. And you've heard me speak of this before. An embassy is a representative um, building or people, the representative authority of another country or nation in a foreign nation. The embassy, the laws and rules, protocols, of the authority of which the embassy represents are in evidence in the embassy. You go to Brazil, to use an example. The United States Embassy in Brazil, that's U.S. soil. The embassy sits on U.S. soil. The laws of the United States are in effect on the embassy grounds. That is U.S. soil. It's been, that soil has been given to the United States government in Brazil, so it's like you were it's like the United States has an outpost in Brazil or all the other nations where we have embassies. So the laws and the authority and the might of the US military will enforce the laws of the US embassy in foreign nations. Likewise it is with the kingdom of God. The church should be an embassy of the kingdom of God. The rules, the protocols, the authority the enforcement power of the angels of God will enforce the authority of the kingdom of God in the embassy, which is the church. I am not saying the church is a building, the church is a people, but the people gather in a structure, in a building that represents the kingdom authority of God. And it's our job to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God, to go out and tell the world that Jesus Christ loves them and that the power and the authority that is in the Bible is still available today. Healing is still available today. Forgiveness of sins is available today. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we do want to mention that we do have free Bibles here at Ephesians Vision Ministries, 711 Northeast Butler Market Road. 
If you need a Bible, stop by and pick one up. We have 24-7 prayer going on in this room. There's either teaching, worship, or praise going on in this room 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never stops. Um, if you come and the door is locked, uh, ring the doorbell. If we had to go run an errand, um, call us the phone number on the door. Uh, if there's nobody praying in this room, the praise music never stops. There's either praise, teaching, worship going on in this room. One of those three things is happening in this room 24 hours a day. Praise God. We just feel strongly we need to do that as the body of Christ. One of the things I wanted to speak about this morning was... Get my netbook back up again. Hang on just a second. Check the time. Okay. Is We've heard so many stories about tornadoes and hurricanes and weather phenomena that have occurred in the United States. Many people are saying it's the judgment of God against the United States for us not supporting Israel. Maybe that's the case. But what God's put on my heart today is to speak about what happens when God blesses a nation, what happens when a people in a nation uh, endorse and follow the words of the Lord, the blessings of God that, that ensue because of that. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. Actually, yeah. Yeah, that's where I want to start. Chapter 1, verse 11, uh, Old Testament book of Isaiah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats. It doesn't, God says, that's not what I'm about. I don't care that you're sacrificing the blood. God is not there as a vengeful God to hurl lightning bolts down and cause pain and suffering and blood and death and dying. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. That's not what I'm about. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of me in the trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incest, is, your incense is detestable to me. When we approach God, when we take communion, when we go to church, we need to have a right relationship to God. If you want to hear God answer your prayers, if you want to see God answer your prayers, approach Him with the right attitude. What He is saying to Israel in this day, in the day of the prophet Isaiah, was that Israel was performing functions. They were, doing, they were following the law, but their heart wasn't in it. There wasn't a heart rending. There wasn't a heartfelt need of why we do to do this. They were just following a book of rules. And God is saying, that's detestable to me. I want your heart. Uh, stop bringing meaningless offering. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your false assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. Wow. So they're having a feast before the Lord, and the Lord is saying, my soul hates that. Because I see it rises as a stench before me. Because I see what you're doing, but your heart isn't in it. You're just following a, a ritual. Sometimes when we go to church, we're following a ritual. God is saying, I'm not interested in playing church. I'm interested in a right relationship between you and me. I'm interested in, 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 in um, knowing you and be known by you. God says, they have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. 
Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. How do you do that? Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come and let us reason together. Now this is very interesting to me. The God of all creation who created us, who breathed life into Adam and then became the human race, he's telling his children, come and let us reason together. God doesn't have to do that. He's God. But he's still saying out of his grace and compassion, come and let me, let me show you. Let us reason together. Praise God. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hear this, church. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. The enemy... Now, what I liken this to is a feast that the Lord has laid out. And this feast is a number of things. It could be the love of God. It could be the compassion of God, the grace of God, the food of God, the provision of God laid out as this beautiful feast. Sometimes in our journey of life, it takes a little bit of work to get to that feast table. Sometimes the enemy will come to you and say, you don't have to do that. You can take a shortcut to women to young ladies he says you want to be loved just have sex with a young man and, and you'll feel love and many women give into that temptation because they want they want that loving relationship the man just wants sex um, somebody needs to hear that this morning praise God so the enemy the enemy wants to give you a Happy Meal, a microwave counterfeit of the love of God. God says, I have the feast prepared before you. Grace, love, compassion, mercy, provision of God is laid out before you. But if you have, let's, let's say you have children. Let's say they are disobedient. Let's say they spit in your face. Let's say they do whatever they want. Are you going to continue to dole out your bank account to these children that are disobedient, that publicly de defile your family name, that spit on you in the marketplace? If you as a parent have children that act that way, how is God going to act to us when we do the same to him in the marketplace? God is saying, I want to bring you to the table of plenty. I want you to be part of the family of God. We're going to jump ahead to Isaiah uh, 56, I believe it is. Isaiah chapter 56, verse, starting in verse 1. So we have God preparing this table before him and inviting people to come and partake of the table. Grace, compassion, love, mercy, forgiveness, provision. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand. And my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this. The man who holds it fast. Who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Praise the Lord. This is key. This is really key. We're going to get to the, some meat here. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people, and let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. Now a eunuch is a man that has been um, surg surgically altered so he cannot procreate and the eunuchs took care of the harems and took care of the wives of the king and the king knew that they were safe because they were eunuchs they couldn't have sex with the wives because they had been fixed so to speak 
So the Unix, uh, a man, uh, part of the definition of a man is being able to procreate, being uh, vi energetic and viral and so on and so forth. And so here a eunuch is described as a dry tree. He can't further his, his family line. He's been, a lot, a lot of the man, manliness from him has been taken away. We'll leave that, 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 that. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. So when we think of the, uh, the tornadoes and the hurricanes and all the storms going across this land, and people say that's an act of God, that is not an act of God, I don't believe. An act of God is this. Let me rephrase that. Maybe it is an act of God. I am not saying this morning, that is not the focus of this sermon this morning. The focus of this sermon this morning is the will of God is to bless. God wants his children to be obedient, to have a right relationship with him. When they do, he will bless them, even if they're not of the family even if they're Gentiles, even if they're foreigners in the land, even if they, uh, let's say they're Islam, they're Muslim, they're whatever. And I'm not trying to pick on those, those faiths because of all the items in the news. They are a foreigner in the land of Christianity. They are eunuchs. They are foreigners. Uh, the world would say they don't belong. God is saying, if they hold fast to my covenants, if they want to have a relationship with me, if they want to have relationship with me, I will bring them into my temple and I will give them a memorial, I will give them a memorial and a name that is better than sons and daughters. A son in, in the, the day of Isaiah, and even today, a son furthers the family name. A son can procreate. A son can create sons and daughters and continue the lineage of the family tree. A son, especially a firstborn son, a son is the image of the generation going on. Here God is saying to even the eunuchs who can't do that, to even the foreigners, if they come and follow my commandments, I will give them a memorial and a place in my temple better than sons and daughters. Wow! snapshot of that as a picture of the compassion and the grace of a loving God. God is, is not saying, I just want what I can get from you. I just want your money. I just want whatever. God isn't saying that. God says, I want your heart. I want your life. I want you to be in the family. And even if you're bringing nothing to the table other than who you are, I still want you in the family. And I will give you a name and a memorial in my temple better than sons and daughters. Wow. Snapshot. The love and an act of God. That is a true act of God. That is what God lives for. That is what God desires. <clears throat> wow. Amazing. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve Him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship Him. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy covenant, to my holy mountain. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and give them joy in my house of prayer. Wow. This is Old Testament. This is before the Jesus generation. This is before the New Testament, where is the, uh, the New Testament I give unto you of love and grace and compassion. This is Old Testament. Foreigners, eunuchs, 
You come and embrace the love of God. You come and worship God. You bind yourself to the family of God. And God is saying, I will give you a memorial and a name in my temple better than my sons. Wow. That's amazing. Mm. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer of all nations. Another aha moment. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Everyone who wants acceptance into the family of God will be accepted. If they keep my, co keep my covenants, keep my Sabbath day holy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Jesus Christ, when he came, said, I have come not to break the law, but to fulfill the law. Jesus was saying the same thing. Jesus, how do we come into the kingdom? How do we love God? Jesus said, love the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. You do these two things, and you will be in the kingdom of God. You will keep the commandments of the law. Because if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, all your heart, mind, and soul wants to love God. As you truly have that motivation, as you accept God into your life, your heart will be changed. You are in transformed into the likeness of the Son of God. You will not want to sin. I've talked to people who have been drug addicts, who have used marijuana, for example. And after they have accepted God, they've took a drag on the marijuana cigarette, and it didn't work. They didn't have the high. They didn't have the whatever, because there was something different in them. They had the kingdom of God residing in them, and the, the, that that bind with the enemy's kingdom had been cut off and so it did not have the effect the kingdom rules apply and the kingdom rules cut off the law of the enemy the kingdom rule is in authority and the the drugs had no effect if you want true changing of hearts changing of minds accept God into your life. If you're a drug, drug addict, if you're caught in a lifestyle that you know is destructive, take the Jesus one step. Accept Jesus Christ into your life. Jesus said, all things are possible to he who believes. All things are possible. Not some things, not if you're good enough, not if you have enough money, not if, if conditions are right, not if the economy is better. Jesus said, all things are possible to he who believes. Jesus also said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, or a righteous person avails much. So if you're caught in the lifestyle that you know is destructive and you're reaching out to God, God will hear that prayer. Remember the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son demanded his inheritance. Give me my money. I want my money. I deserve the money. I am your son, and I deserve the money. The father gave him the money. The, the, the prodigal son went out and squandered it, wasted it all on wine, women, and song, and realized that he didn't have anything to live for, and he had no money, and he was eating with the pigs. And he said, well, I guess I'll go back to my father's house, and maybe he will accept me as a servant. Maybe I'll at least have food to eat, and maybe I will at least be a servant. There was a humbleness. The prodigal son had a humbleness, saying, I just want to be in my father's house because I know there's resources there. I know that's where I need to be. And because of my discretions, I'll be a servant. What did the father say when the prodigal son returned? The father said, kill the fatted calf. My son who was dead is now alive. He's come back into the family. The father ran to the son and accepted him back in the family. That is a picture. The prodigal son is a picture of people coming back into the father of God. And it's a picture of the heart of God 
for restoration. What, in the early service, we spoke of restoration in the body of Christ. Sometimes ministries and churches have a situation where someone in leadership or authority has fallen. Sometimes in the body of Christ, and I'm not minimizing the sin, but sometimes in the body of Christ, it's a one-strike-you're-out rule. And when somebody sins once, the whole body turns their back and wants nothing more to do with him. Look at the story of David and Uzziah the Hittite. David had Uzziah. David lusted after uh, Uzziah's wife. He put the man in the front of the battle and had him killed so he could be with his wife. He had a child with her after the man was killed. So David conspired to commit murder, stole another man's wife, had a child with her. And this was a man who was after God's own heart? God restored him. The child had to die because there was sin, there was transgression on the part of David. And David had to pay the price. After Jesus died, Jesus paid the price for us. So we don't have to do that. But back in David's day, there was sin. Something had to happen. There had to be recompense. There had to be a payment. There had to be a penalty for the sin. The child died. But God still restored David. So David, here's a line of David coming. Whoop! He has this discretion. Kills a man, takes his wife, has a child with her. But then the child dies. Then, then there's a restoration process. And God restores David to the lineage of Jesus Christ. So even with all the mistakes that David made, read Psalms and Proverbs and see the heart after God that David had. David knew he wasn't perfect, but God loved his heart and God restored him to the lineage of Jesus Christ. And if you look at the lineage of Jesus Christ, there are prostitutes and there are people in the family tree of Jesus Somebody needs to hear that this morning. No matter what sin you have committed. Remember in Isaiah, we were talking about Isaiah uh, chapter 56. Let no foreigner say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. Because if they have a right relationship with me, I will restore them and give them a memorial and a place in my temple. Better than sons and daughters. That is the heart of God to restore a nation. That is the heart of God to restore a people to the kingdom. It is not God's will that any should die, but all come to the saving knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain in the temple was torn asunder. It was ripped to top to bottom. Before then, to get into the Holy of Holies and to talk to God, you had to be purified as a priest. And just in case there was secret sin in the priest's life that they didn't know about, they tied bells to the priest's ankles and tied a rope to his ankle. So in case he went before the Lord and he wasn't pure and he was struck dead, they could pull him out. Because if people kept going in to, to get the person who was killed by God, and they, didn't, they had sin, they'd be killed too, and you'd have a body pile, and <laughs> they wouldn't have any way to get the people out. So they tied a rope to him. And as long as they heard the bells tinkling or the priest moving around, they knew he was okay. When they heard the bell stop, they knew they'd have to pull the rope and drag him out of there. So that's a picture of the righteousness of the justice of God. So you have this picture of the only way to get before God is to be pure. So God creates this picture of purity and holiness and, and, and what it means to come before God. So you have that picture. Then you have Jesus Christ taking the sins of the world upon himself and paying the penalty for those sins, dying on the cross. And on the cross he said, it is finished. He has paid the penalty of all sin for all time on himself. He was uh, removed from the presence of God, spent three days in the bowels of the earth, spent three days removed from the presence of God, and rose and ascended and was restored because he paid the price of our sins. So, when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain on the temple was torn asunder, so 
everyone had access to the Holy of Holies. The foreigners, the eunuchs, the prostitutes, the murderers, if they come before God with a right heart, if they keep His Sabbath days holy, if they hold to His commandments, if they bind themselves to the Lord. Interesting word there, bind. When Jesus went before the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they tried to use the law to trick Jesus into proving he wasn't the Son of God because, well, if you're the Son of God, then you'll fulfill the law, right? Well, here's where you're breaking the law. And so they would try to test him. And Jesus, in, in the New Testament, would say, and the Word of God would say, and Jesus saw their heart. And Jesus saw their heart. He wasn't looking at this, the perfunctory following of the letter of the law with no heart attitude to follow the law. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were simply using the law to trick Jesus. They had ulterior motives. Their heart was not right before the Lord. Jesus saw their heart. So Jesus sees your heart. And he sees, he doesn't see just on the outside. He sees what's going on inside. And there are some people that look outside pure and clean, but inside there's some stuff going on that God is working on. And Jesus saw their heart. So in Isaiah, Isaiah is telling the nation of Israel to uh, rend your heart. Hmm. And he's saying that anyone can come into the family of God, the eunuchs, the foreigners, to come into a right relationship with God. It's amazing to me that God would say, let no foreigner. This is amazing. This is Old Testament. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from my people. Let me rephrase that. The Lord will surely... Back up. Mulligan, chapter 56, verse 3. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. So the Lord is saying, Old Testament here, that it's his will that even the foreigners be able to come in and be a part of the kingdom of God. And for the foreigner who binds himself to the Lord, who follows the commandments of the Lord, that he will give them a place in the Lord's temple, a memorial and a place better than sons and daughters. What God is trying to clearly say here is, as you come to me with a right attitude, as you bind yourself to me, I will restore you to the kingdom of God. Somebody needs to hear that. There is nothing that you can do that will separate you from the compassion, from the grace of God. Yes, you will have to repent of your sins. Yes, you will have to accept the fact that what you did was wrong and say, God, help me to not do that again. You cannot continue in sin. When the woman caught in adultery came before the Lord and was brought before the Lord by the people, by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were saying, she was caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus said, is this true? And she admitted it was. And Jesus said, you have judged her rightly. And the Pharisees said, the law calls for her to be stoned. And Jesus said, he wrote in the dust, his finger. He picked up a rock and he said, let those among you who is without sin cast the first stone and they all walked away the oldest first interesting the man who had more sin realized it first the oldest first walked away 
And then the woman and Jesus were alone. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? And she said, there are none, Lord. And he said, neither do I accuse you. He was forgiving her sin because she was at the feet of Jesus. That is a picture of what we need to be as we ask for repentance. At the feet of Jesus, admitting our sin. And Jesus says, go your way and sin no more. And Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will give you the strength to resist temptation. In the book, in, in uh, the Word of God, it says, resist the devil and he will flee. God will give you that ability to resist the devil. That is not saying that you may not stumble from time to time. For we work, we work out our faith in fear and trembling. We are transformed into the likeness of Jesus. We are walking this out. But God will give you the strength to do that. Remember the story of the prodigal son. The son returned to the father after he lived the way of the world. And the father ran to the son, gave him the signet ring, and said, kill the fatted calf for my son who was dead is now alive. He has returned to the family. That is an act of God. Not the earthquakes, not the tornadoes, not the tsunamis. That is the act of a fallen world. That is the consequence of a fallen world. The act of God is the story of the prodigal son. The act of God is Isaiah 56, verse 3. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to me, the Lord, say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. This is an act of God. This is an act of grace. This is an acting out of the compassion and grace and mercy of a loving God who blesses the righteous into a thousand generations. And Jesus saw their heart. Jesus is looking at hearts today. Jesus is still asking the question that he asked Peter and the disciples when Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? Some say Elijah, some say Moses, some say another prophet. And Peter jumped up and said, You are the Christ, you are the Messiah. And Jesus said, Blessing on you, Peter, for you have not learned this of mortal men, but my Father who is in heaven. You, Peter, I will give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. On your declaration that I am the Son of God, Jesus is the Son of God, he will give the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. What Jesus is saying is that his authority as you take on the authority of Jesus Christ, as you accept His Lordship in your life, as you accept His that He is the Savior of your life, that you need Him, that you're working in His authority and not your own, then He will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. What that means is that the empowerment of the presence of God in your life will give you the power to resist sin. We need to preach more about the authority, the kingdom authority, and the power that is available with the right relationship of God, with the Holy Spirit living in our lives to give us the power to overcome fear, to give us the power to overcome drug addiction, sex addiction, all the addictions and to not live in fear in this world. For this, as a Christian, is not your final destination. We are living in the age of grace, and sin still abounds in this world. But God told us, all as Christians, 
to be light in darkness. You let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let men, let this world see you acting out. Let you see the world living out your faith in Jesus Christ and let that glorify Jesus. What we need to do as a church is to be ambassadors, to bring the kingdom authority into a world that desperately needs God. That we bring in the healing authority, that we bring in the presence of God into this world so that they can see Jesus Christ in us. Remember, Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. A lot of time in prayer. If he should do that as the Son of God, we should do that. That really means that we need to do it. We need to spend time in the Word. We need to bind ourselves to God. What does that mean? What does that look like? Binding yourselves to God. Another thing that there's a a beautiful word picture here talking about the union of Jesus and the bride, which is the church, as a marriage, a bride and a bridegroom. A man will leave his father and mother and, and unite himself with a woman, and the two will become one flesh. The two will become one. They will be in unity. A beautiful picture of what needs to happen with Jesus and the bride, the church. The two becoming one. One in heart, one in mission. We are, to, we are to take on the likeness of Jesus. We are to take on the heart of Jesus. One of the prayers you can pray if you're thinking of what prayer should I pray is this. God, give me the heart of Jesus. Give me the heart of Jesus to save the lost. Give me the heart of Jesus to reach a dying and hurting world. Give me the heart of Jesus Christ. I want to beat with the heartbeat of Jesus. I want my heartbeat to be in sync with God. I want God's thoughts to be my thoughts. I want to bring God into this world. I want to be like these men and women of old that had a passion to save the lost. Not that you're seeking fame, because a lot of these people, you know, there were times in their lives where they weren't famous. They were ridiculed for their faith. They were, as the world sees it, they were not famous. As God sees it, they were generals in his army. They were spreading the word. So many people want to, want, are praying for revival right now. We need revival in the church. We need revival in this land. We need revival on this planet. You can be that revival. It starts with you. A forest fire, a fire that does tremendous, has tremendous impact, starts with one spark. Spreading in the kingdom of God, to me, uh, we have wildfires here in, in the Pacific Northwest. And what happens sometimes is a fire will start from one ember, one spark, will start this raging forest fire. And the wind will come up and it will pick embers up from this fire and blow them ahead of the main fire and they'll have what are called spot fires. From the wind carried embers from the main fire starting spot fires. So it is with the kingdom of God. As the fire of the Holy Spirit is burning, the wind of the Holy Spirit will pick up these embers and shoot them ahead. And there may be fire burning like in Redding, California and other cities, but God wants, the Holy Spirit wants to take that fire up and blow embers out into other cities and carry the life-giving message that is Jesus Christ into those cities and start a fire that is the Holy Spirit. We are hungry to see revival in the church today. And what does that look like? What does that mean? That means just a, a hunger, a passion for knowing God and being known by Him, for living out 
the Christian walk, for making Christianity a lifestyle, not a book of rules, not a book of rules where you just follow this and follow this and follow this and follow this and you'll be good. You don't just tick off the box. But you have a loving relationship. You return to a first love relationship with God. One of the churches in, in the uh, book of Revelation, in the Old Testament, uh, God is saying, this I have against you, that you've lost your first love. Return to your first love. Return to that love that you had for me when you were first saved. Return to that passion of love for Jesus Christ in your life. Lord, I'm just praying that all the bunny trails I've taken today will minister to people. God, we're just here to be your vessels. We are just here to speak your words. We are here to be light in darkness. We are here to share the hope, the hope, the love, and life that is Jesus Christ so that people can see that there is a way the way. Let's go to Isaiah 55, chapter 1. I'm sorry. Chapter 55, verse 1. Prophet Isaiah. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. He's speaking about a lot of different things here. I think he's also speaking about provision. Come all who are thirsty for encouragement. If you're living in fear and, and, and you have this thirst for courage, you have this thirst for things that are at the table of the Lord, compassion, grace, courage, lack of fear, provision. You want to eat from the banquet table of the king. God is saying, come all who are thirsty and drink of me. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy, my yoke is light. My, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Hear the words of the Lord today. God is not interested in, hear what I'm saying here. God is more interested in your heart condition than whether or not you can quote scripture. As your heart is right and is drawn into a right relationship with God, you will want to devour this scripture. When we take communion, we actually take the wafer and the blood and we eat them. That's a picture, illustration of what we're supposed to do with the word of God. We're supposed to take it inside of us and have it become us, have it change us. God isn't after your money. God wants you. He wants you. You have value in the eyes of God. No matter what the world says, somebody needs to hear this, no matter what the world says, you're ugly, you don't have enough money, you don't have, you're not smart enough, you don't have whatever. God doesn't, God sees you differently. You were created in the image and likeness of God. You were created with destiny, with purpose. You were created to have fellowship with God. Do not listen to what the world says. Do not feel short in your eyes. For God says, you have much value in my eyes, and I love you. My son died for you. If you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I accept the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Just repeat these words after me. He died for my sins, so I do not have to. As I accept his, as I accept your son, I have entered the kingdom of God. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. 
conform me to the likeness of your Son. Empower me with the Holy Spirit to follow your ways all of my days. Renew a right spirit within me. And let me follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You are now in the family of God. Go to Isaiah chapter 56, verse 3. You were a foreigner. Now you're into the family. And God is going to give you a place at the temple. Better than that of sons and daughters. That is an act of God. If you need uh, prayer, if you need help of any kind, um, let us know. We'd love to pray for you. Ephesians Vision Ministries, Bend, Oregon. Uh, our phone number is 541-323-2882. 541-323-2882. Or you can email me at dave.evm1 at gmail.com. dave.evm1 at gmail.com. No matter what the world says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not on your own understanding, but all your, He will make straight your paths. I know I messed up some of the wording in that scripture, but hear the heart of what the Lord is saying. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not, lean not on your own understanding, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust him in all your ways, and he will make straight your paths. Be blessed to be encouraged today. We see you next Sunday morning. God bless.